Hello everybody and welcome to our very, very first Supplier Showcase for Heat and House Farm. So as I'm sure you're probably aware, obviously times are a bit different at the moment. So we are switching to do something slightly new, something slightly different. Uh, we've seen some brilliant live um, supplier sort of wedding fairs from other venues, but we're going to do something slightly different. So we're going to do Supply Showcase which is a feature every single week with a different supplier. We've obviously got loads of brilliant suppliers that we um, work with on a regular basis, and we can't wait to show you all. So today's is Tom Finkel. We're gonna bring him in in a little minute, but I'm just gonna cover, obviously, a little bit more about the supplier showcase. So um, obviously there's lots of things that we have learned over the years. We've obviously been going now, the venue's been going 21 years, but we have got so many years of event experience. So whether it's coordinators that obviously have more experience away from the venue and then bring their experience to the venue, we've just got so much to give. So this is another reason why we thought it was time to do a live supply showcase. Um, there's lots of hints and tips that we're gonna be sharing with you and it's really to get the best out of your wedding day. So I think without further ado, we're gonna bring on DJ Tom Finkel slash event host Slash voiceover artist. I've learned so much today from Tom. Good evening. Beautiful. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Amazing. 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 Good. I'm Looking loving the fact better. that I get to put this suit on and feel all this exuberance and this this event personality just now <laughs> comes out. It's so much different. It's like when Superman pulls it open and you can see the yes, you become yeah, that's, that's what it's like right now. Now, there's a big question though, Tom. Does it still fit you? I'm, I'm not. I, don't, nobody goes to my wife's Instagram post. She's just literally put a picture up of me that's sort of like mid lockdown because there's a shop before lockdown. It's, it's the problem is that every time I walk past the fridge, I have to open it. And before, before lockdown, that never happened. So it was, it was always the way where I was running around or doing stuff. And uh, yeah, at the moment, it's uh, oh, a little bit tight in here. Yeah, during the club, I'm sure there's a few of us feeling like that as well. So definitely. Um, so what else have we been doing during lockdown then? All sorts of stuff. Well, being a, a, a family man, um, I'm a father of two. Uh, so we've been doing all sorts of home learning with the kids, uh, keeping occupied uh, as our family, but keeping um, sort of very much isolated and away from everybody, uh, just due to a, a variety of other bits and bobs. But keeping busy, that's what it's all about. It's just keeping busy, keeping positive, uh, keeping everything flowing and everything everything working. So uh, I've been doing all sorts of things, uh, like I've been hosting a virtual online quiz each week, and uh, never going to quiz you up, and nice little plug for that, uh, which has been. No, I've, I've, I've not actually attended this yet, but I've heard incredible feedback from a number of our team who have actually joined it, and I believe you have over three hundred teams on a week now. Yeah, that's right. Over three hundred teams uh, join us each week um, to uh, to parlay their knowledge into uh, into winning scores, and it's all about you guys and the, the honesty that you bring. So, if anybody wants to come and join us on a Thursday night after the NHS clap. Um, you can make it a regular fixture within your week. And we have some brilliant prizes as well from some wonderful sponsors. So yeah, come join us, it's free. Nice stays and things like that, it's incredible. Love it, love it. Love obviously it. outside yeah. lockdown, obviously after lockdown. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant, so obviously you've had lots of bookings as well. Yeah, obviously been working on postponing all of them, yeah? Yes. So that's that's been a big facet as well. A big, a, a big thing that we've been going forward is trying to accommodate as many as we can um, rescheduling their big days. And it is a massive thing for them because obviously they're built up and built up towards a particular date. And to then reshuffle everything uh, as things go, it's, uh, it's it, it must be hard. It must be hard on, on them to do. So we're just trying to give as much positivity as we can to them, try and be as flexible as possible. And I know you guys at Heaton House have been phenomenal in trying to reaccommodate their dates uh, by looking at ways that their suppliers can all integrate on, on, on sort of midweek dates and easier dates so we can all pull together um, and create the most amazing weddings for your uh, for your clients. So yes, rescheduling has, has been going really well. I'm so proud to say that I've, I've probably rescheduled about 38 weddings successfully. And these, these may be like five um, that are sort of questionable at the minute. So, but we're just trying to find out exactly what we can do for them. But 38 is not bad. 
That's very good. And the good news is as well, obviously, when we get out of lockdown, the parties are just going to be incredible because we've got some serious making up to do. So your dance floors will fall before that are going to be even uh, even busier, I'm sure. So obviously, I, I know a little bit about you, but do you want to just sort of tell um, people that are watching sort of how long you've been a DJ slash event host? How did you get into it? Give me a bit of a background. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, this is my 18th year now DJing, and it, oh, wow. it, it, it seems like it's gone just like that, um, because I, I always feel sort of 18 inside. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it was always my dream, really, to work in entertainment. Um, and is this a photo of like young Tom? To... Say again, Sarah, Is that is a photo of young Tom? That's, yeah, that was, that was about five years ago, I think, something <laughs> like that, so... It, that I think you can see the length of the hair there, and this is sort of pr at this current lockdown stage where I can't get to the barbers. Literally, it's killing me from inside that this quip is getting ever bigger. Um, but yeah, that was that was a, that was a little bit of a younger Tom, but we like that. We like that. It's all good uh, with the sound wave coming up my ears. But yeah, so 18 years. I first started off when I left school uh, working in radio, uh, working in, on a, for a station called Galaxy in Manchester. Um, and I started there sort of working at different, different levels, different things, working on breakfast and, and a variety of things. Parlaying out of there, I went to work in nightclubs, uh, and that was wonderful. Um, used to used to love working in nightclubs. Where I met my wife actually in, in one of the nightclubs, which is mm -hmm. lo local to our uh, uh, local to our house. Uh, and then from there, I sort of looked at it from a monetary basis and looking to buy a house. It's just not feasible to do with the money that I was working. So you work on a, 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 on building yourselves into the wedding spectrum and the corporate spectrum, uh, and then just built it up and built it up and built it up. And uh, it's it's been wonderful being able to entertain for all these amounts of years. And <laughs> just keep that energy flowing that's what it's like there's lots of energy in me i need to get yeah. it out so yeah it, that's, that's it'd be so doing. interesting wasn't it, to count how many guests you've actually like partied with or like dj for it'd be so interesting i bet it'd be quite a few thousand i reckon i reckon i've done close to if not over four thousand events so <laughs> it's working on that basis even between say yeah 150 there's, there's got to be wow thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> yeah, don't try and count it uh, yeah the man sort of kicked in after i said it i was like oh let's leave it. <laughs> no stop 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 don't embarrass yourself yeah so kind of like obviously we know what you love doing on a day-to-day -day basis but if you couldn't be a dj what would you be what would you be doing with your time Okay, so um, as I said, I, I always want to work in the entertainment aspect, so uh, and the entertainment spectrum. And what I've sort of taken on board, sort of now, uh, because my children are going to school and I do get a little bit of time during the day, is something that I would have probably taken on board um, when I, I worked back in the radio days, and that was um, voice acting. So I do a lot of uh, a lot of sort of voiceovers, whether it be for um, telephone services or um, events where they need voice of gods or uh, different commercials and adverts and that sort of thing where they don't want to pay for uh, for, for an X Factor style Peter Dixon we can come on and we can go it's time to face the music all that kind of stuff oh wow okay well I like this actually takes me back we've not had some I don't think too recently but we had used to have some like best man speeches and they used to do like full kind of like dramatic production. They were absolutely brilliant. Like we've had some really good ones over the years. And that I can see that working for that. Like just doing the best man speeches. Like imagine having like voiceovers and things like that and like celebrities coming on board and wishing a happy couple a great day. So it would be awesome. Love that. It works awesome. It flows beautifully. Um when I do things like the wedding hosting, because we get to build up and build up and build up to the entrance of the bride and groom like that in the x-factor style and then give them a massive reveal um through to a, a, an enormously uh, exuberant and energetic and clapping crowd so it's it's good yeah i was gonna say well we'll, we'll come on to the event host in a little bit because i think we need to touch a bit more about that because it's very exciting that part is oh yes. so, yeah definitely very exciting um so obviously like you know we've got you live on today but how, what is kind of like the sort of journey for couples how do they contact you how do they go about inquiring what's kind of like the process give us a bit of a lowdown okay so wonderful so i'm very very privileged in the fact that i'm a recommended supplier um at some incredible venues notably eat some house <laughs> uh, we love you literally raise that roof and it's what we do every time we come yeah i, I absolutely love it um so i work on a basis of being a recommended 
player so so clients can contact me via your website uh, and via things like your amazing client experience events um so where guests can come down and have a nice little chat with me and see exactly what i'm about um but i do a lot of things via my social media links so facebook instagram and twitter as well as my website which is djtomfinkill.com uh, i'm very very one-on-one -on -one with clients so typically they get in touch with me just via a, a little message whether it be on the website or a, or a private dm uh, on social media then we can send them all the different package aspects that we do because we do daytime we do nighttime and there's loads of different avenues in the middle so we can do uh, additional lighting we can do additional little photography packages or even video djing which is another sort of visual aspect of the entertainment uh, that we can add on there so yeah there's loads of different things we can do but uh, i love to i love talking to people as well so any clients that, that do no, that, no, no. <laughs> Never would have guessed you like talking, Tom. Never would have No, never, never. <laughs> Can't get a word in my house. It's like this, this, this. So what's kind of like your setup on the actual day then? So obviously you'd come, obviously give, we won't talk about the event host just yet, the daytime okay. bit, but what kind of like is the nighttime? So if somebody but you just a DJ at the nighttime, what's kind of like your setup? Okay, brilliant. So but, but the disco tent that we have, uh, what I like to do is be very, as I said, very one-on-one -on -one with my clients. So as you can see in the picture there, we've got the gorgeous rainbow roof. And if you look down the far end, that is my typical set. Uh, so it's structured decks um, on our staging area. Uh, with plinths on either side with moving headlights. But what I do like to do is incorporate up lighting down the far end and to tie that into whatever theme that your uh, particular wedding is going for. So if bridesmaids are all in purple as they were on that particular day, then yeah. we like to up light the set in purple with purple around the backdrop. You can't really see the backdrop there because we've got that in black, but typically, uh, and sometimes we have it in white so we can create all that purple and then purple down the outsides as well. So if, if your bridesmaids or your groom Groomsmen have got ties in any particular colour. What I like to do, uh, as well in the attire that I'm wearing, is try and mesh things as much as possible. And I think that's a little different aspect because not everybody thinks about that, but it does tie in so beautifully when you look at the end product, which is photographs, video, that sort of thing that we all tie in together. And uh, that's, that's the point. It's being a part of your day as much as I possibly can. Yeah, and it's the same with us as well. Like we can ch um, change, for example, like that rainbow lighting doesn't have to be rainbow. We can do it as like a solid colour. It's all sorts of work. Yeah, but this is like how you find suppliers that are recommended with each other. They all work together without you even knowing. And I think that's really, really important. There's a big difference. So that's really good. So why do you, uh, this is obviously like a little bit of an ego boost question, but why do you love working in the house farm? What makes us different to the venue? Well, as I said earlier on, I am very much a family man. Uh, and being a family man, I love the way that, for whenever I turn up at Heaton House Farm, uh, obviously it is a family business, but all your staff feel like members of the family as well. And no, that is right. just a massive thing for me, that we all tie in together. And whenever I turn up, I feel like I'm embraced as a member of the family as well. So it, it, it we all tie in together and complement each other as best as we possibly can and um, so that aspect is a big thing obviously the grandeur and the amazingness of Heaton House Farm is another <laughs> thing it is prestigious to work with you guys and um, floating everywhere from the sycamore tree all the way through into the nighttime barn uh, we yeah. love it we love it it's brilliant and and as I say the staff are just wonderful so you've got you've got um, from our event coordinators perspective just masters in the field people who know what they're doing um, and know what they're talking about so if you've got any questions uh, as pertains to our bridal room they are there to help you and they know it inside and out and that is that is a big big thing and um, to be able to know the venue know exactly what we can do without promising uh things that we can't do um it's, it's knowing the venue knowing what we can do and making sure that we can make dreams come true and that's what it's about exactly it's true and we are we're missing our extended family so much it's actually been obviously we've still got like the office team is still working they're still doing planning meetings with our couples so we're still like keeping going and it's been so nice like we've had um like Saskia's little girl walking in on video calls with her and like we've been like hi Felicity and it's like it's so lovely like we feel like we probably know the family even better now than before so it, it's all brilliant isn't it so and also one thing that is a little bit different here is um so my dad Mick actually used to DJ um yeah it was actually his 60th birthday last Monday, a week ago. Um, and actually, people were commenting, wishing him a happy birthday, saying, you were about DJ. And I was like, gosh, that is a long, long time ago. Wow. He's, retired. he's retired. He's he's rubbish now. So I wouldn't like to 
<laughs> no, he's, a, he's an absolute superstar. <laughs> and that as well, from that side of it, being being able to, to discuss things with, with your dad like that from a DJ perspective, it's all the things like the acoustics and the lighting that are already in place at Heaton House that do make things miles better. Because obviously from my side, I bring everything from a self-contained basis, as much as I can load in and feasibly do for you. But everything that's already built into the ceiling just gives it that extra wow factor. And um, so every, everything from haze machines laying at the back to just get focus onto all the spots, all the different parkans that we've got lit so we can uplight things uh, on the dance floor, specific things on the dance floor, everything's preset. And you can see that he's really, really thought about it. So. Mitch, Mitch. The toys, Tom. That's all it is. He just loves playing with like the latest gadgets and gizmos and everything. It's just like a, he's like a little boy with every night. <laughs> oh well, we we, we fit in well because as you can see behind me, I have a little boy inside as well. <laughs> I know. I've just spotted like all these vintage toys and things like that. I think I think we're yeah. gonna have to do another live with you, Tom. And you're gonna have to explain about all these different oh, things. Oh wow! <laughs> you take you around this man cave. It is full of. 80s and 90s memorabilia. It's uh, it's just the way I am. I've got this Peter Pan syndrome where I don't ever really want to grow up. So, but I think that shows as well in my performance. It's a brilliant era. Why should you? One thing I love as well, like in the evening, because obviously I do like a number of uh, evening um, like close down shifts. Um, so that's why I meet, meet you an awful lot. But to be fair, I'd always come out and say hello to you. But anyway, even if I wasn't. Um, and what I love is the fact that actually when everybody moves through from the dining room to the evening room is the fact that you've got the bar, all your guests and the dance floor all in one room. Like you build up such an amazing atmosphere. And like I've worked, like some people have this like um, kind of like thought that midweek weddings might be a little bit quiet or anything like that. Some of the weddings that I've done with you recently have all been midweek and the dance floor has been packed. Like you have absolutely bought the house down. It's just been incredible. So, no, oh, pleasure. Um, thank you so much. It was, it was really, it. I love it. We've really enjoyed it. Like we've all had like a little jiggle behind the bar as well. So you always know all about. about. That's what it's all about. Raising that room. <laughs> well, from a heat and house basis as well. The, the the benefit that you guys have is that because you've got a, a completely separate dining area that yeah. flows really nicely into the evening area means that there's no lull from a turnaround perspective. So literally, we can go from one big facet of the day all the way through into the party and literally go for it. So we, we don't we don't catch sort of clients sort of resting on their laurels. It's straight in straight away. So yes, look. It is. It's nice having the different areas because you kind of like feel fresh and like get all excited with different lighting and stuff. So it really sets the mood, doesn't it? Really does, really does. Love it. Brilliant. So I want to know, um, and obviously people can ask questions and things like that, and I hope we've got some questions coming in. Oh, yes, we've got quite a few, which is fantastic. Oh, wow. Really? Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, Great. good. So hopefully we've got a bit of a Q&A at the end. But I want to know, what do you do to motivate a crowd for the first dance? And I know this obviously comes into your event hosting, which I think is really, really exciting. We've got a fantastic video just playing as well at the moment, which shows off the atmosphere you create. But explain how you do it. That's it. So from, from an evening perspective, what I like to do um, with my guests is find out where our party people are. So it's, it's, it's making that emphasis around the tables for that particular evening um, to sort of urge each other on. So we do a, a, a number of different things, whether it be that's a more where we get everybody up and singing and then we get everybody standing and singing, then everybody up on chairs singing and swaying. And obviously it's, it's tables battling tables. So this is before the first dance has even happened. So from a bride and groom's perspective, it's really alleviating any kind of tension that you could have uh, between people that don't know each other and just breaking that ice to start with, even before I've introduced a brand new happy couple onto that dance floor uh, to share the love for that with their first dance and just make sure that everything is as bang on as possible um but yeah it's 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 a matter of capturing that moment as you can see in that video there um where we're doing that some more eh? we're singing with them and we're getting involved the thing that you want to do is make sure that you are looking after as many people as you possibly can um throughout the event and incorporating as many people as you can because it's really easy to just play music for one particular set but incorporate everybody and then what you get at the end of the day is you get happy people you get memories made for your particular wedding you get some incredible visuals as you can see here on the video uh, and also um, from a photography basis as well so 
it makes um, our other suppliers' jobs a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it just starts the night off as best as we possibly can. So yeah, things like that really, really go for it. Yeah, and definitely. And do you want to sort of explain more sort of like the daytime side as well? Like, yeah. because this is a bit new. This has kind of only come in the last, what, couple of years, would you say? A couple of years, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, was, it was just something that I saw within the market because uh, having worked in the industry for so long, um, I've met a lot of Toastmasters uh, and they are wonderful, wonderful people at what they do and they do such a phenomenal job. Uh, but what I tended to find was that our Toastmasters uh, were a little bit more mature than... Um, than, than the typical sort of DJ aspect. Um, so I, I thought there might be a little spin on it to incorporate things during the day. So it's why I sort of worked around the basis of creating a party before the party. Um, and we class that as wedding hosting. Now, what that is, is I will actually host your wedding breakfast. So it's all the way from the point of welcoming your guests into the wedding breakfast tent, uh, getting them ready for you and building up the excitement for your arrival as, as, as our brides and grooms. Um, so big introductions, big arrival. We've got everybody up on the chairs. The beats are flowing. As you can see in the video here where I brought on the wonderful uh, brand new Mr. Lions Martin here. Um, as you'll see, as they float their way through, it is with that grand entrance where everybody's up on the chairs, singing and clapping and living life and starting from the moment. But as we float through um, the, the actual process of the wedding breakfast, it's taking things away that might be um, just a little bit of a, 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 a sort of a more relaxed time during the afternoon into creating that party atmosphere. So it's all things like We'll play Mr. and Mrs. with our bride and groom. We'll do big, big introductions for the speeches. We will do uh, a big intro and a big outro. And I'll do things like the wedding speech sweepstakes. So each guest will have the opportunity to give me a guess as to how long they think the speeches are going to last. Uh, and then the, the particular guest that, that is nearest wins. Um, and we can ask guests to put a pound in the pot. So in a case of you've got 100 for your wedding, someone's going to win 100 pounds and have the night paid for straight away. Uh, but then we do things like napkin swinging and find out who has got the most rhythm in our rooms. All <laughs> sorts of different things. And from a wedding hosting perspective, it flows really, really nicely, especially at Eaton House Farm because we've got two separate areas. So we can go from the wedding breakfast and then we can do a big outro tunnel again, which causes great photography shots uh, for our official photographers. And then it flows straight into the nighttime. And from a, a client's perspective, you know that all of your guests have had that one on one with me during the day and we've broken that barrier. So everybody for the nighttime basis can then feel like we're best mates we are uh, and can come and have a nice little chat to me while we're on stage and put their input in and it flows so nicely it is and, and something that i noticed as well like obviously we see you know a number of different suppliers at the venue and you know everyone's fantastic in their own way but i think there's a massive massive difference with people just feeling like relaxed and you know obviously that you have all the sort of the formalities of the wedding and I think having like an event host just relaxes people it takes away the formalities like whereas if you had like a more traditional Toastmaster obviously they you know they have their place absolutely there's some fantastic ones out there but I think our kind of couples that come and book Heat and House Farm are more suited to a more relaxed style and I think yeah. that works absolutely perfectly with them. Oh well thanks so much for that I, I honestly I love it it's it makes things miles, miles easier for my job um, because I know for a fact that I'm already there um, early doors and everything flows through for the daytime. And then you've got sort of one point of call. So I act as your eyes, your ears and your mouthpiece from, from a bride and groom's perspective. So whatever you need, I'm there for you all the way through the day. Brilliant. OK, so moving, flipping back to the evening now, what is the what do you think? Like, what's the best first dance you've ever seen? What makes a good first dance? Oh, well, I've seen, I've seen hundreds, hundreds, and, and we've seen some absolute corkers, absolute corkers. And it really depends on the clients. But this, the, the one that particularly sticks out in my mind is for one that I've do, uh, I did for, for two amazing uh, friends of mine now, Sarah Jane and Chris Hall. And they, as you can see in the video, took their first dance to that next level. And they integrated lots of very, very um, personal, big head masks, uh, as you can see there. Uh, but it was all very relevant at the time. So I think you've got 
Um, you've got Gordon Brown, and I think we 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 see Cheryl Cole and Simon Cowell on there. But it's, they're doing their first dance to Beyonce's Crazy in Love, and it just sticks out because it was so fun and so different. And utilized those props and got everybody going. Literally, as soon as that was that was done, it was bang. We were straight in, ready to go. It was. A brilliant, brilliant wedding, and uh, and we love them very, very much. They've they've become great friends, uh, and that's that, that's what it's all about for my bride and grooms. I want them to become my friends and and make sure that they are um, sort of relevant to to what I do. Know a, a lot about me, uh, as we've done with the quiz as well. I've got so many past and future couples mm -hmm. that have joined on there and interact with me now on a weekly basis, which is wonderful, which is really, really nice. And, and with my birthday only being a couple of weeks ago, so many amazing, lovely birthday messages from people that I've never actually even met. Yet. <laughs> that's nice, isn't it? It's, it's nice to know that you've made such a difference to someone's days. And I think that's, that's something obviously we love here as well. We're, we're missing it so much. So I'm hoping we can be back that better than ever, I'm sure we can very soon. So uh, things that I love in a first dance that like, because that, obviously that's really good if you're more sort of like relaxed, perhaps you don't take yourself too seriously. Obviously lockdown is a perfect time to learn a first dance. Absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've, got, you've got amples of time here to throw, exactly. your, throw yourself yeah. about and, and learn different moves. This is what it's all about. Yeah, and we've we've had um, sort of like all kind of like groomsmen and ushers. They do like one routine, and then all the ladies and the bridesmaids do another, almost like Hen V stacks. We've had oh, that yeah. routine. We've had dance offs. We've had all sorts. Well, one thing I really like um, is, and also great for photos, is when you have a first dance with like your rolling smoke, your dry ice effect, almost X Factor style. So you could have oh, a yeah. blue, the dry ice. Um, and a confetti cannon. I love pyrotechnics. I am a massive pyrotechnics fan. Like I'm a bit of a weirdo like that, but I love it. Anything, any effects like that which surprise guests and just go down brilliantly because a lot of the venue is all about surprising people throughout the day. And I think like the first dance is kind of like the last opportunity to get a big surprise in there as well. So yeah, confetti cannons, smoke, dry ice, fire breathers, whatever, we'll, we can Absolutely. do it all. Try, try and make it different. That is the point yeah. of, of, of it. Try and make it big and impactful and, and things that people will remember is what you're going for. Make your wedding so much different than the typical and utilizing all those different things. And, and we have got some brilliant suppliers at Heaton House who can do that for you. Um, use them. Use them. Do what you can do to build it all up. That's what it's all about. And then on the opposite side of the scale, obviously, we've got some people that don't want to do a first dance at all, just want to get straight into the party. So. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's all completely down to your personality. And, and from a bride and groom's perspective, we can go and we can cover any aspect. So if you want to be absolutely exuberant and, and, uh, and all about the spectacle, we can do that. And if we want it nice and chilled and scaled back, then we can do that as well. We can do that as well. Okay. So talking about first dances, what are your top first dance songs? What would you recommend? Oh. Someone was stuck, didn't know what I had. Okay, um, so as I say to all all, all bride and grooms, um, make it about you. Uh, make it something that's personal to you. And it doesn't have to be a lovey-dovey tune. Uh, it can be something that's different. But some of the top five um, that we have worked with over the past 18 years um, do seem to roll really, really much into one. So this this stuff like Ed Sheeran is very, very popular. So yeah. Thinking Out Loud and Perfect, very, very popular requests. Then you've got things like Codaline, the one which is another one that is very popular. Um, Amazed um, by Lone Star is another very, very popular one. Um, and then this this there's all sorts of different little bits and bobs um, that you can look towards for a first dance, but just make it personal about you. Uh, make sure that, that everything, when you when you hear it, you get goosebumps. That's the thing to look for in a first dance. Definitely. I think, um, I think Olivia, hopefully, who's on te technical tonight, thank you very much, Liv, I think she's going to be putting a little link uh, either in the comments or rolling. Oh, there we go. Oh. Fantastic, there we go. Right on time. Um, and that is a little blog that we wrote um, a little while back, and that also has the top five first dance songs from us as well. So most of them are covered. Just in case anyone's stuck, that's yeah, down there. That's what you need, that's where you need to go. So and if you're still stuck, let us know and we can 
give some more suggestions. I think Shania Twain's also quite a popular one. Shania Twain, yeah, you still love like it. It's a great, great tune. This, yeah. Well, there's loads. I like to be one on one, so I'll, I'll chat things through with you. And if, you, if you're worried about anything uh, from a musical perspective, then um, myself, I'm really, really happy to have a chat with you. And I know the team at Heaton House will be. Mick, Mick would love to have a chat with you about that. <laughs> yeah, you might want to, you might be chatting for quite a while now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So what, what other kind of classic songs are there to get, you know, the, the dance floor full? What's a good one? Okay, um, so it, it, it is always down to the styles and types of people that we've got in our crowd. So it's about, it's about living life and reacting to what they're reacting to. So it's finding out as you're playing the background music, as things are meandering towards the That's Amore. So it's finding out what the heads are bobbing to, what the feet are bobbing to, what they're tapping to, and what they're singing along to. So if you're looking down sort of the soul and funk avenue, you can look towards things like the Jackson 5, I Want You Back, or Stevie Wonder's Superstition. Uh, you can get a little bit more modern with things like Bruno Mars, uh, Uptown Funk, or Pharrell's Happy. Uh, or you can float into things like 80s pop classics, stuff like Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody, all really big, big tunes, but it really depends on which avenue uh, you are taking, which genre you're looking at. The Killers, Mr. Brightside is such a massive, impactful tune. What you want to do is you want to start the night with big tunes and find out where the crowds go and pop them at certain, bring them in peaks and valleys. That's what it's all about. Building them up, building them up, dropping them off, uh, building them up again. Yeah, that's what, that is what, it's, what it's about. And, and bringing everything to a big crescendo with their finale. Uh, the finale is one of the biggest, biggest things of the night. So a uh, thing to really, really think about is how you're going to close your wedding out. It is. And like a really popular question that we have is obviously couples deciding whether they have a band or a DJ, um, yep. or a band that offers a DJ service. And obviously there's quite a big difference about that. So what would you sort of suggest to a couple that are looking at it or, you know, band or singer, for example, yeah. sort of offers a DJ service? What would you sort of say to them? Okay, so from, from a live entertainment perspective, they are phenomenal at what they do. And obviously they are making a living out of being amazing vocalists, musicians, instrumentalists. They are doing a sensational job at that. Um, but when it comes to DJing, DJing is a little bit of a different spectrum. It's a little bit of a different skill. And it's making sure that you can interact and, and work with a crowd that gets them all built up within that atmosphere. Um, works around your announcements, um, whether it be um, building up towards the first dance or a building up to a crescendo of a finale. That I don't think that you get that type of atmosphere when you've got a band performing as DJ as well, um, because they don't have that pattern, they don't have that rapport, um, because, it, it, I mean, it's not always the case, but you, what you tend to find is when it's a band performing, it might not be the front man that is, is performing, it might be one of their texts that he's just putting music on. And another thing as well when it comes down to the music is, unless you've got a professional DJ, they might not be able to, to cross fade the music and mix the music as well as someone who is well versed in doing that. Um, saying that I can't sing, so it's it, it, from a <laughs> I don't want to step on their toes by doing that. Well, I bet uh, you could, but I bet no one would want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for the showers. Yes, <laughs> really. um, but yeah, I mean, what I would say is. Bands are phenomenal, live entertainment is brilliant, but work hand in hand. I like to work very, very hand in hand with the bands that I perform with to make sure that there's no crossover. Uh, we don't play the same tunes, uh, that we alleviate them as well. So we elevate them, we bring them up with big intros uh, and make sure that, that they are literally on a pedestal for when they go on. Because again, from, from a crowd's perspective, you're bringing that band up to that level they're going to perform in front of your crowd who automatically, even before they play, think they are incredible. So it's all these different bits, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd look towards. But um, definitely, if you're thinking about having a band, think about having a DJ as well. Yeah, I would always suggest the same as well. We've actually, <laughs> um, not necessarily here, but you know, some weddings that I've been to in the past when they've had a band and they've had a DJ service, it's literally just been a Spotify playlist, which is, you know, not very exciting and if the songs if the playlist doesn't quite hit the crowd right you've, yeah. you've lost it all night um, and then literally at midnight the clock struck almost like a cinderella moment and they literally just unplugged the song whilst all the guests were around it sort of built up into a fantastic night and then literally all the guests were around in the big circle i think it's like take that never forget really big crescendo and then boom, flat 
So met, yeah. It was it was a, it was a real shame and I will remember that now, that wedding. Yeah. And it's such shame. Like it was such a fantastic day and then it was that on the end. And it was like it, it could have been like this incredible moment and it wasn't. It could have been. And that's that's what we build up towards yeah. doing. And I think that's the difference that some some people don't see when they think, oh well. They, they offer a DJ, so, well, yeah, as you said, they just do a Spotify playlist. And it could be that as you float through genres as a DJ, you try and find that natural bridge um, to, to go between genres. Whereas if you've just got a Spotify playlist, you could be playing Whitney Houston one minute straight into Sex on Fire by Kings of Leon. And it just doesn't flow. You've got to be able to flow through that evening and take people on a journey. Tell them a story through the night. That's, yeah. that's what it's about. Two fantastic songs, though. Great songs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what kind of things do you prefer? Do you, like, give a couple? They might have sort of, like, a bit of a set list that they want playing or a bit of an idea if they want through the night. Or do you yeah. prefer to do best uh, requests on the night? What do you prefer? Okay. So uh, clients can make requests on the night. Absolutely. Uh, we want to know what they're all into and what is going to make them move uh, all the way through the evening. But what I like to say to our bride and grooms is, Think about genres as well as particular songs. And I have had instances where we've been sent over 200 songs in a playlist, and that's impossible to perform within a five-hour set. It's just not feasible in the amount of time that we've got. Not so enough minutes. Like to... Sorry, Sarah. There's not enough minutes to fit them all in. Not enough minutes. Yeah. Um, so what, what I like to say is um, think of maybe your 10 favourites um, and think of the genres that you love, and not just you as a bride and groom, but think of what your family loves. So I know for particular in my family, uh, my in-laws are well into their Northern Soul. So Northern Soul is a great niche genre. It's, it's amazing. And the music that they play is, is, is phenomenal. But what you tend to find with Northern Soulers is Northern Soulers only really like to dance to Northern Soul tunes. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if I know in advance that we've got a load of Northern Soulers in, that's brilliant because I can structure the evening and build in a nice chunk of Northern Soul music in for them. So it's just, it's all about the knowledge. I mean, sort of knowledge is always power. So if you guys want to put together a playlist of say 10 songs, let me know what genres all the family are into. And obviously the big things like your first dance, any other particular family dances, if you're doing father of the bride dances or mother of the groom dances or anything like that. Uh, and then obviously build it up to a big crescendo with the finale. Fantastic. Now, big question, what is your ultimate favorite song? Favorite song ever? Yeah. Not 19 Forever by the Cortinas is my favorite song ever. Um, being a Manchester boy, um, it's a, a proper Manchester band, the Stockport band, the block, um, from, uh, um, well, no, actually, it's, it's, uh, it's North Manchester. They are Heaton Park based boys, uh, are the Cortinas. Uh, I always think they're Blossoms. Um, but uh, yeah, they're just a phenomenal song. And it always relates to um, me. Uh, because I live my life where I, I feel like I'm being told you're not 19 forever because I am a big kid inside. And as I said earlier, I do have this Peter Pan syndrome, uh, as you can see behind me with my uh, sort of retro fest of, uh, of old memorabilia. Uh, it's what it's all about. And it, it, it just tends to keep me younger. Nostalgia is such a wonderful thing that um, that's the way I, I like to live my life. It's on chairs, singing and swaying. And even <laughs> though I'm sort of mid 30s now it's 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 still as prevalent as it ever was to get that party going and just just live life with a smile and with a bounce and keep 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 that party flow i like that that young lady down the front with a very very short <laughs> face. she really didn't she really didn't expect me to bounce on that chair next to her it was uh, yeah it was fun Oh, brilliant. I wondered what photo was going to come up, actually. I wondered if you got one when you were like 19. I was like, oh, this could be, this could be going downhill rapidly. <laughs> yeah, I think with, the, with this lockdown, though, the curtains grew back in. Um, so there's a picture on my Instagram. Um, so we've had to uh, whiff it for this evening with, uh, yeah, Pompadour. You've done, well. You've done well. And obviously so many people sort of ask us, like, with fans, musicians, uh, DJs, um, obviously, like, when they can they come and see you? Can they come and watch you live? Can they come and see you do your thing? Obviously, we've got the experience events where it's a little taste, but it doesn't really yeah. give the full atmosphere. Um, obviously, what kind of what can they see you at? 
Yeah, so so as you as you're highlighting, we do have our amazing climate experience events, which are phenomenal, but it does only give a little taste. Uh, now, what I do say to bride and grooms is it is hard for me to invite you to somebody else's wedding. Um, it's just it's it's not right for me to do that. But what we do have at Heaton House is we have some phenomenal Christmas parties coming up um, just before Christmas. So we are going to raise that roof and take you back with a great Gatsby-esque theme. Uh, and it's going to be epic. So if you guys want to come and see me and your wedding is after Christmas, please feel free. Come and join us. We've still got tickets available for our Thursday night event. Um, please feel free. Get on there. Come and see what we're all about and come and party on that dance floor with me. Olivia, Olivia's just messaged me as well saying, um, I've booked, so Olivia's obviously one of the team that works here at Green House Farm. She's just like, I've booked Tom. Everyone can come and see me at my wedding. I'm thinking, whoa, well, whoa. Well, Olivia. You've heard about the Facebook parties, haven't you, Olivia, where you just invite 10 people and 10,000 turn up. That's what it's going to be. I can't wait. But I'm so honoured that I'm, I get to be able to host uh, Olivia's wedding. It's going to be an absolute corker and, uh, and party the night away with you guys. It, it, it must be good flattery when, like, someone that works in the industry books books a supplier. So you know, you, hopefully, it really, is. it really is. It, it, it honestly <laughs> it does. It massages that ego. <laughs> So obviously, just before we go into the Q and A, I think we've got one last question uh, just to ask you, Tom. But if anyone wants to get any questions asked, um, I think we're going to be picking two or three questions just to finish off um, live. Um, but one that I've got is sort of like, what's the best way to end the night? You feel okay. like what's the best way to end it? Okay, so it's all about pacing. So what I like to do is I like to to put together a finale which lasts around half an hour. So on a basis of Heaton House Farm, we wrap everything at midnight, which is the perfect time to close things off. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to start building it and building it and building it from 11.30. And it's all with big tunes that everybody knows. So it's stuff like Queen Don't Stop Me Now, Journey Don't Stop Believing, and Proud Mary by Tina Turner, and Oasis, <laughs> Don't Back In The Bed all the big tunes that people know the words to and can sing to and can get enveloped in and then build it up to it towards things like take that never forget it's always been my favorite um yeah. because it, it, i can get everybody circled get our brides and grooms in the center of everybody and get them to absorb that love and get them um, looking around so they've got that that final moment, that final bulb flash, um, and we get everybody to share that moment with them. Um, now, what I like to do as well is open it up to our bride and grooms to find out if there's anything they particularly love that they yeah. want to finish the night off with. But I always advise that it's stuff that people know, stuff that people can sing along to. It's beaty. Um, and if they did want that just personal touch, what we can do is we can come full circle and we can finish on their first dance. So we start and end the same way, which is really, really poignant because sometimes you can build up and build up build up for months over this one particular song for your first dance. And obviously you only hear it once in the day. So yeah. loop it together and start and finish on it. And it, it's, it's really lovely. It, sometimes it just depends on like the vibe, on the actual track. Yeah. It really just depends. So yeah, it's it's... It's, that's why it's so good to actually have a DJ who knows what he's doing and can just judge it on the night. I think that's so important. So um, I think that's all the questions that I've got for you, Tom, but I'm hoping that Olivia, my technical amazing person, oh, there we go, we've got a question, really. There we go. Yeah. That's your price, lovely. Do you um, love all types of different genres, genres of music, rather? There we go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so whatever areas, and I've done all sorts of different styles and types of events. So whether or not we're playing sort of Afro beats um, for our um, for our African um, West Indian styles, or we're playing a particular uh, at a Jewish event uh, where we're bringing in all the different um, all the different wonderful Jewish anthems, um, or whether or not we're doing sort of a rock wedding, or we're doing a solely wedding, or we're doing a funky wedding, uh, or we cross it. We, we're just particularly tailoring it to one decade. I've done some amazing weddings which were all focused like in the eighties or in the 90s. So whichever genre you guys are looking towards, I try and tip my hat as best as we possibly can and build things in um, to the set that, that is just completely focused around that genre. So yes, all different genres are covered. And I remember as well, you did one wedding um, and I was uh, on the bar and you actually, it was like a Disney themed wedding and you actually played about three or four songs from Frozen and it just, the dance floor was packed. Now obviously that worked perfectly for that wedding, wouldn't necessarily work for a different one. 
So it's, it's right. yeah, it's so different. You've got to be so varied. So yes. I think we've got another question there, Olivia. Oh, there we go. Brilliant, I love this. Uh, we have a singer. Can your DJ set work alongside a live singer as well? Great question. Great question. And yes, absolutely. Absolutely. What we like to do is like to liaise with our live performance as well. So whether it's a singer or a band, just to make sure that we merge perfectly. So whether it's down to kit for the evening, just to make things nice and easy for us, um, we, we can talk about exactly what we bring in to make sure everything sounds crisp uh, and also find out exactly what they want to do, what their what their vision is for the, for the evening. So it could be a case of I'll bring things to a peak in my uh, set to bring them on and they will perform something that is very similar. So it, everything merges very, very nicely. Um, we like to accentuate each other. That is what I'm all about uh, and what a lot of our entertainers should be. We are, we are all one family. Um, so it's, 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 it's trying to keep that even keel and making sure everything flows as perfectly as we possibly can because we only get one take at this so yeah. we want to make sure that it is perfect every time so it's planning it's arranging it's discussing and making sure it's done and dusted behind the scenes lots of bride and grooms don't see that going okay brilliant fantastic and have we got the next please Olivia I don't actually think this is going to be a question but okay. let's let's just see what it is don't have a question, but this video has made me so happy and got me super excited for our wedding in October with you guys. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant! Thank Yay. You. Thanks, Natasha. I love that. That's, that's amazing. Really so, yeah, so thank you so much, Tom. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure if there's any questions unanswered, I'm sure you'll be able to just have a little quick comment um, in a few minutes' time. I'm sure that would be brilliant. Um, so next week, obviously, we're doing this as a weekly thing. So every Monday at 7 p.m., hopefully you can have your tea or you know sit eating your tea while you're watching us. We've actually got uh, Marie from Butterfly Events. So she will be on live chatting about all your different venue styling. Um, she's she's super active on Instagram. So if you haven't seen her yet, head over to our Instagram. You'll probably find something of her work, definitely. Um, and, yeah, hope to see you next week again. Thank you so much for joining. And... Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe, guys.